trumpets are played whenever the king arrives and I see the trumpet as a royal instrument and that's why I wanted to play the trumpet at all costs. My brother played the saxophone in the same wind orchestra, but it really did not interest me. I immediately thought I would become a trumpet player. It was a head-to-head -head race between ice hockey and playing the trumpet, but then my teacher Raimos Armas reminded me that I needed teeth to play the trumpet and if I would continue with ice hockey, I might soon have no more. That's why I figured out that it would be better I concentrate on playing the trumpet. I had no teacher as a child. We went to the wind orchestra and there was a somewhat older person who came to teach once in a while. It was mostly the older maids who showed us how it's done. There was, however, no basic lessons at the time, except at the summer camp where I luckily met my future teacher at an early stage. I want to emphasize that the beginning is very important, that you learn the basics very methodically. In my opinion, one can play the trumpet very well, very technically orientated, but in my opinion, what is most important is that the music comes from the heart. I learned this from many good teachers and, of course, through the many years I have played, to understand that the most important thing is not the perfect technical ability, which is, of course, an essential part of the music, but that you can find the music even if it's just a scale, the sound comes from the heart and is not only restricted to the technical ability. I have been a juror at many international competitions and I prefer those musicians who play with their heart and soul compared to those who play flawlessly like a machine. In my opinion, a computer could play flawlessly as well. It is important that a musician finds his tone, has his sound, has something to say and wants to reach across to the audience. Then when the hair of the arms are up, the musician reaches across to me and I also strive to reach my listeners, to appeal to their feelings. You should listen to all the instruments and all styles. I learned a lot from singers, strings, woodwinds, etc. It is really worth listening because very often pupils or students happen to try to imitate the playing style of others. But just playing like someone else is pointless. You have Maurice André or Timofey Dokshis' sound and if you imitate them, then we will only end up with bad imitations. It is all about bringing your own sound into the world or doing your own thing and that is exactly what I mean by music directly from the heart. To create your own sound and soul, then you would have achieved a great deal when you manage to develop your own and not copy others. The most important things I learned from Timofey was by following his performances. The first time I saw him live and watched his manner of entering the stage, the performance had already begun when the door opened and he went on stage. It was so royal to look at and it was almost divine to me as a young fellow. All this, especially his style of play, of course, you could already tell from his manner of walking that he cannot play badly. Now, if I imitated his way of entering the stage, it would be ridiculous. Everyone has to find and develop his own style and I learned it by following Timofey's performance. It sounded so touching that sometimes a tear would flow down my eyes. It was so full of music. The same is true for Maurice André, 
whose every note has an uber musicality. That's the point. No matter what phrase it is, it should come from the heart and not from the machine. Well, listening to CDs alone is something different from the concert. The whole atmosphere is missing. In addition, you have to learn that playing live is different from playing in the studio because you have to communicate with the audience and the orchestra. The atmosphere of a concert is very important, which is why everyone should go to concerts whenever possible. Of course, I can also grab my own nose. After 38 years as a professional trumpet player, I no longer run to every concert, but I've heard a lot and still do. For example, at the Lieksa Brass Week, it is wonderful when after I have planned concerts with the artists all year long and have suggested works to them, I try to always play at the beginning so that I can still enjoy the concerts of the others. I find it wonderful and worthwhile if after a year of preparation I can just listen and enjoy when top musicians play. When I was a student, I went to all kinds of concerts. Today everyone said, ah, it's on the internet. But that is not the same as when you hear it live. I remember back then when Dachschitzer or other well-known musicians came to Finland. Professionals and students came from all over the country to listen to the concerts. Today, even if someone well-known gives a concert, Nobody is interested in him, and that is very unfortunate. If you compare it with Japan, you will still find that. When I perform there, even the people of Sapporo come to hear the concerts. You need to understand how you want to sound, how your own trumpet should sound, and then try to develop that. Then certain characteristics, such as your phys physiology, size of the lips, the equipment, but equipment plays only a tiny role, so little. Most of it happens behind the mouthpiece. There is the musician, there are the feelings, and there is what young people cannot have quite much. There is life experience. I notice this more often. I have lived quite long and have been through a lot, and this can be heard on my music too, and it characterizes my sound. This is quite natural. You can't create it. You can only kind of practice playing a C major scale, for example, and you can play it sad or angry, and so you can practice that expression of the feelings. But you have to decide and develop what you want to sound like. It doesn't only help to listen to brass players, it is also important to listen to singers and so on, and to really distinguish what exactly you like and what not. The human voice is very similar to the trumpet in many respects with regard to breathing and so on. This is something every trumpet player should think about. In my opinion, a natural breathing technique is a fundamental pillar. Of course, the knowledge of what is happening here. On the other hand, doesn't necessarily need to be understood at an early age. If it works naturally and well, just play. Too much pondering on how it should work just creates more problems and makes the whole thing more difficult. If possible, you should adopt natural relationship towards playing. Furthermore, if you're not pleased with something, the first question to ask is, would you sing that way? No? 
So I say, play it exactly as you would sing it. That is very important. My daughter plays the trombone and my son plays the violin. And I also ask them, would you sing like that? Because it happens very easily that one puts emphasis on the wrong notes and so on. You must consider how you would sing it and then it should sound like that while playing. Yeah, you have to know the whole work and not just play your part. Be it a concert or whichever piece, you have to know it. In trumpet concerts, you need to know what happens in the orchestra. And you have to master this very well, otherwise it will be difficult. You can see this very often, even at international competitions. Well, I understand that it is expensive to pay a repetiteur, but you immediately notice during the competition that that guy there has never played with the accompaniment, but has practiced only his own part. The difficulties are overwhelming if one does not know the accompaniment. Others even practice only the pieces of the first round because they believe they cannot make it to the second. But if they do, then the disaster becomes perfect. I personally find it very offensive when someone comes to me and says, you have a great sound, what mouthpiece do you play with? Well, I say, you can buy those things everywhere. However, one way of looking at it is that what suits me must not necessarily suit someone else. It may be possible, but you have to try it out. Maybe this helps someone to play excellent and high, but maybe this does not apply to you. You have to try to appeal to the common sense. People are different. Physic, lips, breathing, the same applies to the instruments. I was very lucky to have met and worked with the Spada family. It is their passion to build excellent instruments and I myself am interested in further developing them. I think they really know how to make wishes come true and if something doesn't work, they stick with it until it works perfectly. It is nice to know that you do not have to order something at a store and then it's just the way it is. The J-horns are the models which I assisted in their development and which I like very much. They must have a clean intonation and a fantastic sound and we succeeded to do that very well with the J-horns. In Japan, the sensei, master, is still very much valued, such that everyone gives their all in every moment in order to deliver the best possible performance. This is no longer the case in Europe, but in Japan, everyone is so well prepared and willing to give the best, unlike in Europe. I don't know why, but perhaps it is because the institutes are losing more and more respect and esteem, not to say they collapse. What you read from public schools here is quite terrible, but there is no such thing in Japan. Well, traveling and strange environments are exhausting for me, and also when I sleep poorly, etc. Of course, sometimes I have to push a little harder, but the whole thing is no longer natural. I do not know how well it can be noticed from the outside, but I get a bad feeling when it is not flowing and I have to force it. Of course, everyone has bad days. It's a normal thing in sports, just like it's a normal thing in music playing. And a lot of excellent players say they start preparing two weeks before an important concert. They reduce the scope of the exercise and practice the most strenuous exercises first. And then three or four days before the concert, they do only the essentials to be optimally fit. Sitten todella vaan sille, että pitää, pitää yllä, yllä semmoista hyvää soittovirettä ja sitten, mutta siihen ei niinku However, this does not happen in the orchestra. When the conductor strikes down, you have to play. So it would probably be nice to work only as a soloist and perhaps also as teacher.
then you could decide when to play and do only what you need. On the other hand, if I had not been to the orchestra, I would have missed so many beautiful works, because the most beautiful music is in the orchestra. Opera is the second most beautiful compared to the orchestra, where I have experienced great things. I am way too pedantic. I had problems with taking a rest. I practiced too much and did not understand enough to take a break. I had to learn that because the consequences were that the embouchure suffered and the endurance worsened and that is not really good. Not enough is taught about the importance of resting, especially when one is studying. We are gradually beginning to understand that. Sports scientists talk of 72 hours, which a muscle needs for complete regeneration. And I do not remember the last time I even stayed for 72 hours without playing the trumpet. A free day in the week is very good for trumpet players, but you should not tell the students, because they will think they could do so more often. In my opinion, if you play only half an hour a day, then it should be daily. This is what I strive for both for my students and my children, to play every single day. But then, if you have to practice very hard and have to work in the orchestra, then a day off in a week is very welcome for the head, the body and all the muscles.